Did you hear that? That's a blue jay. I love blue jays. Jerks, but they really keep some of the other bully birds out. What's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. See that? Beautiful sunrise. It's a very nice morning, like 66, kind of crisp. Off to an early start today because the pool construction started on Sunday, unexpectedly, which was the day I had planned on filming for the week. Here we are, bright and early, just me and the blue jay i don't like him anymore he's getting really annoying i didn't plan anything for the week but there's a plant i can show you i've been cleaning out the garage getting ready to move the plants inside right late october supposed to be having some frost sometime in the next 10 to 14 days all the tropicals are gonna be coming in because of that the needing to clear up space and the garage has been used for storage for all the home renovation stuff it's been messiest year ever in the garage Hey pumpkin, how you doing, bud? Okay, before I show you, you have to promise, you gotta be nice to me, okay? I, I spent a lot of time out here cleaning in preparation for bringing the plants inside. It's not that bad. Not that bad at all. Here's what y'all didn't know, is that this entire wall, there is a path right here that was about as messy as everything over here. That's to get out of the garage, but that was just jam-packed boxes and the old carpeting and wood scraps from basically right around here all the way over to here came out about six feet so i got all of that taken care of yesterday and while i was doing that i found a plant you remember my limelight dracaena i found it it was buried underneath old carpeting scraps and boxes and construction equipment and just all this stuff if you i need to turn the fan off it's been a while since i filmed in here forget turn the things off. You're doing a home remodel and changing out the floors, you have to get everything off of the floors. So a lot of stuff had been coming out here and piling up very high all summer long. There's still more, I still, there's all this. All that still has to be taken care of, but the remodel's not done yet. So that's the stuff where I'm like, well, I can't put most of this stuff away until all the flooring's done. And, but we're here to talk about the plant. Look at it, pretty shocked. I had wondered this summer, I was like, Where's my Dracaena? I'd had this for a few years and it's been a trooper of a plant. I didn't remember giving it away, but I do on pretty regular occasions. If I have people over, friends over, and somebody says a, they like a plant, 90% of the time I'm just like, oh, you can have it, take it. I just assumed that I'd given this away to someone. Nope, it was underneath a pile of boxes and poles and all kinds of just junk that was laying around over there. Talk about a sturdy plant. It's worthy to me of making a video on it. If you're looking for a plant that you can bury underneath a pile of boxes, try a limelight dracaena. Oh, clearly it could use some TLC. You can see the lower growth down there. Pretty sad. I did give this a really nice heavy drink. I moved it over here where it's going to get better lighting, obviously. I mean, much better than being buried underneath a bunch of boxes over there. It's like almost directly in between both those garage doors. I suppose everything worked out just right to keep it alive, despite it being underneath rubble, right? It was getting water, even though I didn't know it was there. I have still had some plants that I kept in the garage throughout the summertime, things that were smaller and more delicate that I just knew if I took them outside, the squirrels would get to them. So I have still been out here watering about once a week with a hose that runs from here over to those plant shelves and that water runs out down the ground and it goes right over where this plant was and the water was going underneath the container. So it's been getting watered from underneath about once a week just from whatever's been coming off of those plant shelves. I'm going to attribute that to being the only reason why this plant's alive. Dracaenas are sturdy. I don't know if I'd say there's six months without watering sturdy though. That's probably a stretch. Now if this plant had been getting more light and the amount of water it was getting probably would not have survived. It wouldn't have had enough water to keep up with what it needs to grow. It's being told to grow when it's getting light. And if it'd been getting more dark, and even more water than it definitely would have died because of root rot. So just everything, it just worked out well. I, I guess you could say, well, I know it doesn't look great. I'm not upset about it considering, you know, that I didn't even know where it was. I thought I had given it away or that it had died and I just was some kind of memory fart and I couldn't remember what happened to it. Even grew a fair amount too. I mean, look inside here, that 
mostly new growth in there. Like eight inches of new growth, pretty weird wonky growth. I do think I'll probably have to give this a chop. I'm gonna give it some time, some TLC. This is going to get repotted after it's had several more days to rehydrate. I wanna see those leaves nice and firm. I don't want any more flaccid floppy leaves on the plant when I repot it. Fresh soil, fertilizer, all that stuff to get it going right again. Let it put on another probably six inches of growth, which shouldn't take too long. These grow very quickly and uh, see how much more curve there is in there. But from looking at it from in here, I would say that that's going to be pretty weird and odd. And the limelight Dracaenas, they're one of the ones that can get pretty big. So it'd be best to just cut that. It'll start to branch. So need to be methodical about where the cut's made. I guess we'll talk about all that when it's time to do it. It's not quite there yet, because like I said, it needs some time to recover. Main thing right now is hydration, keeping heavy breezes off of it. You know, in worst case scenario, if I really wanted to, I could come through and chop that entire trunk up on each one of those into, I'd say four to six inch sections and start a whole bunch of new plants. I don't know why I would do that. I like this being a taller plant and I don't see them around at the nurseries all that often anymore. They're pretty common for a couple of years. It's probably been about three, four years since I've even seen one at a nursery. It's definitely not one that I want to get rid of. It's not a rare plant by any means. It's just that, you know, the Dracaenas, there's always new cultivars being popped out left and right. So this one I think is just falling back, not getting the attention because of all the new ones that are out. There's a shuffle with plants, you know, that'll come back out as being a popular one again, more than likely, because it's a beautiful Dracaena, a very sturdy one. You have to take my word for it on the beautiful part. Now, the limelight, it has a nice chartreuse vibrant green foliage on it. It's not one that I've noticed gets the brown tips quite as easily as others do. It's, this does have brown tips on it, but it also went six months without being watered, at least watered intentionally, I should say, and without light, because it was, you know, basically in a tomb over there. Oh, the heater. There's another thing I forgot about when filming in the gross space. Gonna have to deal with that. So you can see how the warm air is moving this plant some, just a, a smidge, not very much. That's not going to be good for this. It means I need to rethink where I have this sitting. I'd say it's fine for now because that heater is only set to run at like 75 right now. I'm not trying to keep it very hot in here, so that'll shut off in just a minute. But I wouldn't want that warm, dry air blowing continuously around this because then obviously every single leaf that comes out of there is going to get brown tips. Right now, it's very crucial that this plant has the ideal hydration. If those brown tips are forming on the new leaves, then what are you supposed to do, right? When it's on the old ones, Whatever, you can pluck them, you can pull them off, but if they're coming out with the brown tips, then you're just stuck with those. Can't really do anything about that. So yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll move this to over there when I'm doing some more things over there to get ready to bring the plants inside some sterilizing or sanitizing with some things. But in a day or two, things should be better over there and I'll move this over there and then I'll start moving plants and like, you'll see it in all the vlogs, but that's all. I don't, I get, there's nothing I can do outside because of the construction. I already saw a truck pull up. So it's just, I don't know, things are gonna be awkward for a week or two on the channel while waiting for these projects to get done outside. I don't want to walk around and film when there's a crew of people out there that just feels weird and kind of odd and disrespectful to people who are working. And it makes me uncomfortable. It's just not something I'm going to do. But this worked out. Here's a plant that I forgot I had that I saved from being garbage. I don't really know where to go from here. So comment down below, say hi. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you.